Hello my lovely ravens and welcome back to my channel. My name is Chantelle and in this video I'm continuing the creation of Dumbledore's office in 1 12th scale. This is the fifth video in the series and if you've missed any of the other videos please check out the playlist link in the description box below or in the iCard section in the top right hand corner. This week I'm building the walls, windows and bookcases for the second tier and I show you how to create miniature books. Speaking of books, as in last week's video where I announced that later this year I am going to build the first of the four Harry Potter common rooms, I just want to repeat that announcement if you missed it. I want to give you the opportunity to participate by creating miniature books to go into the common rooms. I will link to the community post in the description box below so you can read up about what you need to know about it if you would like to participate. So far I have received three packages with wonderful creations. I will leave in the description box whose packages I've received. So let's get into the project. I'm creating the walls out of cardboard, similar to the first tier. I roll them in the direction of the corrugation of the cardboard so it's easier to shape the cardboard against the round shape of the floor. I've cut the side pieces to the right width and then have to add extra parts to make it the right height. I'm constructing it the same way as the first year, just by putting parts together with masking tape. At this point I thought it would be a good idea to trace the floor onto a piece of cardboard and cut out the shape. This way I have an exact copy of the floor and it makes it easier if I need that shape for anything that has to do with the floor, which I can't access anymore when the walls are on. I should have cut out the windows before gluing on the walls, but I forgot. So here we are. I'm holding the cut out of the large window that is in the lower tier. The mid tier has narrower windows, as you can see on the floor plans. I'm going to take the cut out of the large window, trace it onto some tracing paper and fold the paper cut out in half. I fold it open again and fold the two outsides to the middle fold. I just have to slightly trim the top of the window, but there is the shape of the mid-tier windows. I cut the window shape out of cardboard so I can trace it more easily onto the walls. I tip the mid tier on its side, find the middle, decide how far I want it from the top and trace around the cardboard and cut the window into the cardboard wall.
Next up, I'm sanding down some pieces of cereal box and I'm then going to glue two pieces together as that is the thickness I want them to be. I then trace the cardboard cutout of the window onto the cereal box. The cereal boxes will be the frames for the windows and I'm giving it half a centimeter of margin on the in and outside of the frame, making the frame around the window one centimeter wide. For the windows I am using the same packaging material as I used for the windows of the lower tier. This packaging is from carrot cake trays. With the windows for the lower tier, I left the middle beams in. Basically, where the plastic would end, there would be a horizontal beam. And I cut all the way through for these windows. So I'm adding the beams in just after, just for this one window. I'm attaching the beams with wood glue and then move on to Mod Podge, which I should not have done yet as I'm going to cover it up again with bricks. But I suppose it doesn't hurt either. So once that layer of Mod Podge is dry, I'm going ahead and put all the bricks on. These are the same bricks as used for the lower tier. Once they are on, I'm cutting off the excess. Of course, now I have to repeat that Mod Podge process. To finish the windows, I am adding the plastic and drawing on the lead in the grooves of the plastic with a permanent marker. and then placing the windows onto the walls of the second tier. Moving on to the bookcases, they are almost entirely made out of cardboard. I was first thinking of making them out of balsa wood, but then thought it would be easier to cut the curved bookshelves out of cardboard. I first made a base for the bookcases so I know if they fit, and this is what I will be building up from. I am measuring one inch in for the depth of the bookcases. Now I've got that piece cut out, I'm attaching blue tack so I can stick it underneath the window. The bookcase will go on either side of the window and this way I can exactly measure out where the sides of the bookcases need to be. After measuring and tracing and cutting the bases for a second time, I glue them in with hot glue. For more cardboard, I'm cutting strips that will be the vertical sides of the bookcases. I'm placing the second bookcase base cut out with blue tack on top of the base I glued in and start attaching the vertical side beams of the bookcases with hot glue.
Once the vertical beams are on, I can cut the curved bookshelves and start building the bookcase from the base up. And this is what every level of the bookcase will look like. Now it is time to glue it all together. And here are the bookcases put together. It took a while, but it is really rewarding to make things out of cardboard. Of course, now it's time to make them look good. I'm starting by cutting small strips from a piece of cardstock, which I will glue to the horizontal parts where the corrugation of the cardboard is showing. On the vertical parts, I will glue strips of balsa wood to give it that wooden bookcase look. I'm applying glue to the corrugation and then glue the strip of cardstock. It is a quick and effective way to hide the corrugation. You can of course use wall filler as well, but you will get a different effect and different look. And once they are all done, it already looks so much different from the one without the strips on. It's time to cover the back of the bookcases. I am going to use cereal boxes and hot glue to cover them up. Now that the back is covered, we can continue with the front of the bookcase and cut the balsa wood to size. Once they are all glued on with hot glue, I'm going to add some detail with craft foam. I'm cutting out little squares that will go on the top, the base and the middle of the front of the bookcase to give the bookcases more interest. I'm attaching them to the bookcase with hot glue. And to add some more detail, I'm gluing on strips of cardstock on top of the balsa wood. And I'm also adding some smaller squares on top of the foam ones. When I'm done adding all the details to the bookcases, it's time to give it a layer of gesso. When the gesso is dry, I'm painting the entire bookcase a dark brown with acrylic paint. You can see me dipping into a jar. I had to mix my own color as I could only find the lighter brown that you can see in the tube on the right.
And this is the entire bookcase painted. I'm really happy with how it is looking so far, but let's add some more details. I am going to be dry brushing this lighter color on top so the details stand out more and it adds some aging to the bookcase. I wanted to bring back the gold that I used in the cabinets for the lower tier as well, so I'm coloring the entire strip that I glued on top of the balsa wood with this gold leaf marker. Then for our finishing touch I'm going to add these rhinestones to the squares for a little pop of shimmer. And here is a final look at the bookcases. I'm going to show you how to make one of these open books. A book that is legible with real words in it. And a book that is just for decoration purposes. And it's just seen from this or this angle. So let's start with the easiest of them all, which is this. For this you need some covers. It doesn't have to be these kind of covers. You can also just make up a cover yourself. And for this one, let's go with this grim book. Because it has a thicker spine and I'm going to make it just like this one with the curved spine. So for this, you basically need this. I will leave a link in the description box below where you can find them on Etsy. And you need corrugated cardboard, as thick or as thin as you would like it to be. But I'm going to go with the, quite a chunky cardboard. Now you want it to be just under the cover of the book, just inside. Just gonna slightly score it so I know where to cut it. Now this would fit perfectly inside. However, as you can see, the spine is still a little bit floppy. So I'm going to attach another piece. Now you can see this wraps around quite neatly and this looks like pages when you look at it from distance or from above. Even this part looks better so I might just flip it around, see what looks best. Then when I'm happy with how that looks, I'm going to glue that into place. You can also use PVA glue, that doesn't really matter. And then just gluing that inside. There we go. And then either, either with Dolbar or Distress Ink, you can go around the edges. What I found to be a little bit faster is a very big marker, preferably a brush tip, 
that you are not too concerned on destroying because it will fray eventually. And there we have it. A very simple and effective book for display. They don't all have to be openable. And um, it looks decent, effective, and there you have it. This will be on the inside of the cabinet, even if you put them like this or that, they still look really, really decent. Of course, if you want to put it like that, it's, um, it's a different story, but for Dumbledore's office, most of the books are going to be displayed like this in the cabinet, and that would be just perfect. And the next one I would like to show you is this one. So I've got the cover here, just like this one. I can see it's a tiny bit smaller, so make sure that the paper, this is paper that comes with one of those files when you buy them on Etsy. Make sure that they are, they will sit inside the book. So as you can see, it's a little bit outside. So what I would do, because it doesn't really matter if you can read the story or not. Let's cut off the first line of text. Now it should fit into the book. And then let's see if we do this. It might stick out a tiny little bit, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm trying to line it up as best as I can. I did score the, the page edges beforehand, so it's easier to fold. If you don't do that, you'll be sitting here all day folding pages. Pretty happy with that. And now I can I can go ahead and glue the inside. Especially concerned about the spine on any book, always make sure that the spine is well looked after so that doesn't come apart. And then in the meantime, whilst that's drying, you can go around the edges. This is of course a very, very fast way to do it. It can be perfected. It's not, I'm not an expert in making mini, mini books, but um, they are fun to make. But yes, it can be perfected. And uh, this is just a very quick and easy way to show you how to make books. there you have it, your legible little book. When you put it on just under something heavy, it will stay more flat over time, like this one. Or just keep it clamped. 
And now last but not least, this one. This will take a little longer because this is an actual bound book. I'm going to show you how to sew the signatures together to get this and then to eventually get this and make it into this. So let's go. First of all, we need paper. Now you can of course go with these pages from the books from the download. However, if you want something like this, you can also just use prints. Um, this is another Etsy shop download uh, I got them from. It's a whole sheet with these kind of pages. They're spellbook pages and you can just mod podge them on and it looks like they're part of the book because this is a not openable book. This is a book that always lies flat and open and you only need two pages basically for the text in the book. So papers. You can also use brown paper if that's what you prefer. This is A4 paper. These are offcuts that I'm going to use. And basically the entire thing that I'm doing, I'm going to lie down my ruler next to it and tear the pages. This ruler is one inch wide, which is perfect for this project. Because they are um, leftovers from a previous book project. One of these, I already had them, so. And then you're gonna fold it in half. Fold it in half again. And I think, yeah. And then this is the width of the book. That's so basically that. I made quite thick signatures here, so one strip or three strips, is that three? Yeah, so three strips of paper is basically one signature in a book. And with this one I made one, two, three, four, five signatures. So we gotta do this, another, I know this is also part of it. See that this paper is a little bit off, so I'm just gonna cut that. But yeah, you're gonna make the signatures just as thick as you want them to be until you end up with a block that's about this this kind of thickness, and this kind of thickness is about a quarter of an inch. And I did this in a live stream as well, but not everyone is a fan of live streams and they just want tutorials as is, as that goes a little bit faster. All right, so I might just continue this until I'm done with that. Now that I've got the uh, five signatures. I have five sheets per signature. So five of these sheets make 10 sheets which is 20 pages per signature, which is quite a thick book for a little booklet, if you think about it. It's a little bit of a different size than these ones. This one is a bit more longer than this one, but it does not matter for the process. You can make it as tall or as wide as you want, basically. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some sewing. I am going to stitch together all these signatures as you can see. And I'll show you how. I would normally use 
white embroidery floss um, but for this exercise I'm just gonna use a contrasting color or at least somewhat contrasting um, to show you how I bind the book and to not go completely crazy let's have a, uh, a clip ready all right let's grab the first signature I am going to show you how to do a kettle stitch this required four holes in your book I'm just gonna eyeball it where I'm placing the holes for the signature the first stitch is gonna go from the outside to the inside and you're going to leave quite a bit of tail there then from the inside back to the outside back in again at the third one and back out again here now you should have something like this now I'm going to attach the next signature And to not go again too stir crazy I'm going to poke the holes before I'm going to sew prox at the same location as where the other ones are once you've done this for a couple of times you you kind of know what you're doing and that's basically what I'm doing here now we've got that done it's going to leave that here you're going to go from because this one will sit underneath you're going to sit, go from the outside in and you will see that this makes sense now from the outside in and this is gonna be fiddly And from the inside out from the outside in and from the inside out you should have something that looks like that and now you're going to tie a knot with that first loose strand with this part not too tight not too loose I'm just gonna do three knots just for good measure can cut off that little strand Here we go that's not gonna bother us anymore now you're gonna grab the next signature poke some holes again now you're gonna line it up again with this part I'm going to go from the outside in, from the inside out, from the outside in, at this point you might want to kind of tighten it a little bit. from the inside out and then at this point what you want to do 
she going to go under that previous stitch and back through this thread to connect them and then you're gonna move on to the next signature and this part you might want to clamp as well so it doesn't come apart because it's so tiny now you're gonna go again from the outside in and from the inside out clip off put it back on if you like I think it's a little bit easier outside in and from the inside out and then again what you're gonna do is go through the previous stitch is in between the pages and then again through that loop to attach it there we go just gonna attach the last one and then here we tie a knot. So we go through that one, put that one tight, and then through this one. And there we have it a bound book. So, this it looks very loose and very flimsy, but we're gonna do now is a very important step clamp it here clamp it there I'm using wood glue you can also use PVA glue I just prefer wood glue you're going to glue this and you're gonna make sure that all those threads are covered and down and then you're gonna grab a little piece of cotton or the in my case this is muslin and you're going to attach that to the spine I'm going to press that down there might be some seep through of the glue but that's okay don't worry about that and you're going to move those clamps a little bit down or you can even go like this now because that wouldn't matter whatever is touching that clamp you can just slightly trim that it doesn't need to cover the, in the entire page and then you're going to glue the rest of this down there we go now I told you about the spine that it's the most important part so what you're gonna do is you're gonna move that clip and attach it to the spine so it's all nice and flush and it can dry this way once it's dry it looks like this and it's a fully functional book bound and all 
And this is what we're going to dunk into tea. Let me show you how. All right, so this might seem a little bit scary. However, it's necessary for you to get this book in this position. So what I'm going to do is this is freshly brewed tea. It's still hot. It's just simple English breakfast tea and I get a hundred tea bags for $2.50 here in Australia. It's cheap tea. I don't drink it. I just use it for dyeing pages and journaling purposes and that kind of thing. So you want to get some tweezers because it's hot. And then you dunk the entire book in your tea. Until you think that that is sufficient. Now you have to be very careful with these pages now because they're fragile. Because the water is hot, they become even more fragile. And just beware that this is hot. Just squeezing most of the liquid out. Put the tea aside. And what you can do now, you can see it's completely flat. What you can do now is kind of move the pages about and position them in the way that you want them to be in the end. Looks all right. I'm kind of just pushing this part up. If you want more those pages showing, you can just help it along a little bit with a pointed tool or, an, or a needle. Once you're happy with that, it cools down quite quickly. You can just squeeze the water out as much as you can. And then what I would do is just leave it to dry overnight as flat as possible. Just like that. And this is a few of the earlier pages and then a big chunk at the back. And this is just in the middle, just like this one. I'm just gonna leave it to dry overnight and then um, it should end up like the other ones. So what you can do now just curl those edges up on the side and it's okay if you eat away the paper a little bit it is after all an old book well at least this is an old book that I'm trying to make here there we go and this is how I would just leave it like that once it's dry, it's still pretty pliable, so it's just not openable to another page. So I'm going to work with this one. It's a little bit tricky because it, the spine will probably stand up a little bit, a bit on the side. It's kind of like this one. It stands up a little bit sideways. I suppose a little like this one as well. And so that's just how books are. This one is near complete flat. I'm going to put this tea out of my way so I don't spill it accidentally. So I've already done that here, which is fine. So what I want to do now is take some chipboard or some cardboard and make a cover for the book. So I'm gonna go with the size of this page, of this last page, because that is the size of the actual book. I'm just gonna score it there. Let 
that should be about the size of the book. And because the spine is going to go in the middle, of course, and um, we have another book cover. The spine will be just ever so slightly smaller than the actual spine, which is about half a centimeter. And another cover as well. Here we have the spine, which you can see is just slightly smaller than the book, which makes the book be able to move. And the two covers. Now for the fabric, I thought I could use green, but then I thought, how about I put part of this Marauders map cover on it. So we can have like this little tower showing, or even this tower, and then that at the spine. Maybe I'll do that. Put my glue on here. Make sure I don't have too much on it, because otherwise it will seep through, and I don't want that to happen with the cover. And I can see it through here. I'm going to put my cover on there. So that will be on the front cover of the book. And then my spine, which I should probably... That's fine. Same again, don't want that to seep through. I'm leaving a slight gap so the book can move. This is what you would normally do with a book anyway. Same again, leave a little gap. Okay, now this is stuck on, looking pretty good. I'm going to cut around the fabric, the cover, with just a slight, like a centimeter overhang on, on either side. kind of cool that you can see that lettering there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to glue the corners down. And then I'm going to glue these parts down. Just gonna put some extra glue on this, on these two part parts because I want to stick down that fabric in between that those gaps, and I'm just gonna take my pointy tool and push it in there, basically. And there we go, we have a book cover. Now, you can actually use this as a book cover like this. If you have a book like this one, I think this must be all nearly set. I won't open it just yet because it, the inside might still be wet, but 
basically if you glue this down just if you if you glue down the front and the back you have a book this one is slightly bigger because it's not the same size as that one but it's that's how you make a book an actual book and also so in miniature and if you make it this way it um, actually lies open and flat and you could basically have a sketchbook or something like that however it's still miniature so what I'm gonna do now I've got this red trim I think this would be nice as a bookmark so this is the next step that you're doing now also if you want to put a closure that's what you do now as well before you glue anything on or before you glue the book on on top if this was a closable book this is where you put ribbon or you put it all the way across and then you have a ribbon and then you glue the book on the cover and then you can close it but this is an open book so and this is what we do and I'm not gonna add uh, a closure to that this is the front yep it's gonna be like so it's gonna trim that die diagonally and then I'm gonna glue this book onto its final destination You can see that it goes in a slight angle because the book is only slightly open. And there we go. Now for those book pages, I'm going to leave them right here. When I cut them, I didn't completely cut them flush with the um, inside the black lines of the print gonna cut those black lines off so it blends more in with the page going to ink this up a little bit it should blend in nicely just gonna grab my Mod Podge just matte Mod Podge and a brush what I'm going to do now is gluing most of these pages together I mod podge to the entire book. And then attaching the book pages with mod podge as well. And applying mod podge to the sides just to put it all together. 
and if your paper doesn't fully want to listen to you just keep going over it and manipulating it until it does and the bookmark you just fold it down and apply Mod Podge I'm just gonna let that dry and then for a little finishing touch I'm going to gild the pages So that's it with gilded pages and then what you can also do is make these metal corners just by going over it with some acrylic paint and here is the finished book Now, I think I'm gonna do a giveaway on this one. If you would like to win this book, the only thing, well, two things you need to do is follow me on Instagram. I will leave a link in the description box down below and leave a nice comment on my latest post on my Instagram feed. I will then, about a week later, announce the winner of this giveaway in my Instagram stories so you will need to keep an eye on it and the winner will then need to contact me via messenger on Instagram and I will do the giveaway that way so yes if you want to win this follow me on Instagram and comment on the latest post on Instagram the giveaway will be open internationally and you do not have to pay for shipping. I will pay for shipping. So yeah, there's the little book. And this is it for part five of this video series. Next week, I will be back with you for the continuation of the build of Dumbledore's office. And I hope you like where this is heading so far. Please check out my other social media in the description box below. And if you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And of course, become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!